Welcome to Paris. Bienvenue à Paris. We are going to discuss about intuitive industries. Our industry cannot survive without innovation. Uh, the latest stories is a lot about Internet of Things, IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things. The question is, uh, is it just a hype? Is it just a buzz? Or is something real behind it? So one of the things we've been focused on is trying to define some of those platform technologies that support the Industrial Internet of Things. Uh, for us, there are four broad buckets of technology that we see critical for enabling these applications. We talk about connectivity, we talk about cloud, uh, big data analytics, and finally application development. Uh, there are companies adopting these technologies, uh, and it does seem to be in line with other major technology adoption curves. There was 49% and almost an exact overlap of the companies who weren't adopting didn't really know what the IoT was. They said, we don't understand what it is, we don't understand how it maps to our business problems. We redid that same survey in 2016, just over the past few months, uh, and that number dropped from 49% to 19%. Uh, so we're closing that education gap. Companies today understand what that technology is, they understand the business cases, and now they're looking to try to understand where do we get started, how do we get started with the IoT. Do you think the IoT is real, or do you think it's hype? We at Schneider Electric, we really strongly believe that uh, IIoT, Industrial Ethernet of Things, is real. Uh, we were the first company who put uh, web technologies on PLCs in 1997. Uh, it was said Schneider Electric is putting transparency into plant operations from the sensor to the CEO. The second uh, piece on this is we, st we always believed in open, scalable network architectures, no proprietary systems. And our move very early to an Ethernet IP-based infrastructure for automation systems is, is, is the core, core, core foundation in order to enable data transparency, again, from the device uh, uh, to, to, to the decision makers. Mostly driven from the consumer side, Let's face it, a lot is driven from the consumer side that due to the massive economies of scale, which we don't have in the industry, that suddenly cost for connectivity, cost for analytics, cost for sensors, cost for visualization is dramatically dropping. Well, you can make devices much smarter uh, than before, and we see this massively coming in, in different industries. What's happening is a convergence of very low-cost, ubiquitous uh, um, connectivity, high bandwidth connectivity, ubiquitous low-cost computing, ubiquitous low-cost storage, that's what made the cloud computing possible, uh, and, and the, the, the focus on the outcome economy, that is uh, focusing on, on getting the value rather, rather, rather than focusing on buying hardware or software, focus on the value you're trying to get. But more importantly, we're building test beds. And we see thought leadership, we see early adopter customers taking the next step into building uh, not just the Internet of Things, not just the Internet of Everything, but really this whole idea of the Internet of Data, because that's where they know the value is coming from. We see these proof of concept projects taking off all the way from the municipal, smart city platforms, uh, smart utilities, water and, and energy and grid customers. Uh, we see it in the commercial arena with uh, building automation systems taking the next step towards uh, the use of data for, for benef beneficial purposes. Le leveraging these key uh, technology trends, we have defined our approach to IIoT around three pillars. Uh, to deliver benefits for our customers and, and partners. So this has been really the driver for us, is to deliver new benefits to our customers. First one is augmented operator, second is uh, smart, uh, asset performance, and the third one is smart control. Augmented operator, why? Because we know that operators are struggling to find the information they need. It is commonly accepted that they can spend up to 50% of the time just to find the information they're looking for starting with the Altivar process, where we have implemented a dynamic QR code. You go, you flash it, and automatically you have contextual information explaining what kind of alarm or what kind of faults uh, you can have in your process and help you to solve it. We have also now the second pillar around uh, asset performance. This is a major stake for our customers because, as you probably know, the life cycle costs range from 10 to 15 times higher than the purchase cost. Uh, one is what we call Visio Connect, which enables you to connect your machines remotely. We have also uh, in this area what we call uh, Eurotherm online services. 
So we have then the third pillar on smart control where we want to bring control at all the layers of the architecture up to, up to the enterprise through notably ITOT conversions. But it starts with our new PLC M580. So we have been web technologies, but even now our backplane of our PLC is based on Ethernet IP. So everything now is transparent and gives transparency to the operation of our customers. So from a software perspective, where we start is is really through um, you know our market leading control and supervision platform, Wonderware system platform, uh, which uh, in the case of Schneider Electric is also an integral part of our distributed control system and, and PLC offerings. So for us, the, the real transformation is how are we equipping system platform to handle the broader envelope of real-time information. And then you take that upward, uh, there is a much greater amount of information that we are processing. Uh, and so how do you make, make sense out of that in terms of abstracting those into meaningful pieces of information, uh, his, getting the right kind of historical information, oftentimes filling in the blanks through inferencing where all of the information you actually need is not available. And so that allows us to manage the information. Through Wonderware Online, what we're now doing is making sure that that's not just available locally on premise, but it can be published through the cloud to relevant users at any part of the enterprise. But that's just information available in an abstracted fashion. What you have to do is now start processing it, which is what, in the broad sense, um, is referred to as analytics today, but I really think of that in terms of algorithm richness. So that is really where algorithms are used to process that information uh, and mathematically treat them, if you will, so that now you can predict what's gonna happen uh, in a plant and you can get a greater amount of intelligence through all of the information available to you. But if we had to really close the loop, all of this starts to make sense only if you can put in the very industry specific or the use case specific models that actually describe the process that you're measuring and eventually trying to control. So we can drive interoperability between uh, hardware systems uh, and the software layers that, that naturally interface with it. So if hardware and software systems can actually work together and they are engineered and designed as such, then at the time of actually executing a project, so during the project phase, the cost of engineering and the cost of project commissioning starts to come down. Yeah, so, so what we have done uh, at Schneider Electric, and I would say this started many, many years ago, we have assembled a complete uh, IoT uh, solution stack. And it's really a combination of what is happening at the device level, what is happening at the edge, what is happening at the cloud, and combine, combining, the, combining so, those different elements in, a, in different type of architecture depending on the customer needs. Uh, uh, different customers, different segments have different needs. Data needs to be managed in a different way for uh, uh, data privacy reasons, for security reasons, for performance reasons. So we need to be able to assemble all those different cases. So uh, I, I think there, there are two points that I want to highlight that are very specific in what we want to drive on a technology point of view. We need to enable new business models. So uh, we, we come from product business model, we come from system business model, we have software business model. No, I see more things in the IoT space that is going to be transacted with customers as a service. But in addition to that, uh, the, 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 the challenge or the complexity, depending on the, the angles that we take, is more data, more information, more connectivity means also more complexity. Uh, we at Schneider actually consider that we, we cannot solve uh, all customer problems alone and we'd better even solve them with partners. So we want to drive architecture and solutions that are, that are enabling open ecosystems. Any ideas on where customers really can get started with the IoT? For sure, you cannot speak about IoT without speaking about cybersecurity at the same time. We take into account new way of developing our offerings uh, using uh, what we call the secure development life cycle. We also uh, cyber secure at every level of our architecture at the products. But on top of that, as this topic is not easy to handle for our customers, we also provide to them services in order to manage their end-to-end -end system cyber security. First of all, take it serious. This is one of my first recommendation. Take the whole IIT story serious. Try to understand what it means for your business. And uh, if budget is an issue, and in most cases budget is an issue, st start small. Try it out. Try to learn with it. 
and see what it could mean then if when you extrapolate this through the whole business. What you learn on a small application and you would extrapolate your learnings through the, through the whole um, installation in your company, in your plant, in your process, in your operation. What could that mean for you? But take it serious. This is really my recommendation. The second piece on this is on the learning. Think beyond classical, when I will come from an automation point of view, think beyond classical automation control structures and start to understand what cheap, available, real-time available data combined with the right analytics could mean for your business and the business for your customers. So that's my recommendation. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and attendance.